Hello teachers, I'm Nikki Swain and welcome to the training for Source Writing Scoring Grades 3 through 6. You will need to go to writebrightstation.com to print out the materials that go along with this training. You'll want to click on the Training tab and select Teacher Videos. Under this link you will find the materials and printables that you need for this training. This training is being offered free of charge in hopes that you'll consider the Write Bright program for your classroom. Write Bright is an elementary writing curriculum for grades kindergarten through sixth. It's used nationwide. It offers a choice of both prompt writing and source writing. Each lesson has a video option, allowing our writing coach to join you in your classroom as students complete an essay through a guided writing method. Today, we will be choosing a shorter essay. A lot of times students read several lengthy passages that they use in responding to a prompt, but for the purpose of keeping this training tolerable, I've chosen one that's a little shorter. The prompt today says after reading about Brazil, think about what this flag stands for to this country. Write to explain what the flag of Brazil symbolizes. Use details and information from the articles to support your answer. Notice that we're doing explanatory or informative writing today. Students are going to be asked what this flag symbolizes. The students' writing that we will be looking at today, these children were provided with two sources. The first one was titled Brazil's Flag. The flag of Brazil proudly displays its colors of green, yellow, and blue. The flag symbolizes the government of the people. A sphere is in the center of the flag, with a banner stretching across the center with the words Ordem e Progresso. This means order and progress in Portuguese, which is the language of Brazil. Brazil's government seeks to operate with this in mind. The flag has green, symbolizing the beautiful nature that stretches throughout this country. Brazil is home to huge forests and fertile fields. The sphere is blue with stars showing the bright blue sky that hangs over Brazil. In the middle of the flag is a yellow diamond symbolizing the wealth that came from gold and diamond mining in the early years of the country. Brazil is proud of its land. Notice you can see what the children see, the parts of the flag. It has the green, the yellow, the blue, the banner, and the stars. Source 2 is titled The Country of Brazil. Brazil was at one time a Portuguese colony. Portugal owned and controlled Brazil so the people were not free. It was run by a king. The people that lived in Brazil wanted independence from being controlled by another country. In 1822, Brazil found independence and created the Empire of Brazil. In 1988, Brazil wrote a constitution making it a federal republic. This allowed people to vote for their president. Brazil's constitution was influenced by the Constitution of the United States of America. It focused on a system run by the people. Brazil is the fifth largest country in the world. It has hills, plains, mountains, scrublands, highlands, and beaches. The river system in this area is complex. The Amazon is one of its major rivers. It's also home to the Amazon rainforest, which holds one of the most diverse habitats in the world. The rich wildlife filling this beautiful land of trees and plants makes it an environmental concern as people clear the land to build homes. The world needs the Amazon to be protected because it gives large amounts of oxygen. Brazil's flag has 27 white stars representing each of the 27 states. Only one star is higher on the flag because Brazil only has one state north of the equator. Brazil has a mining industry focused on gold, copper, tin, and iron. In the 1690s, there was a gold rush in this country. In 1729, diamonds were also discovered, which began a diamond rush. Nearly half of the gold in the world was from Brazil. Today, Brazil remains the fifth largest producer of gold in the world. As a beautiful country with many resources, Brazil has a lot to offer. It is quickly growing and influencing our world. Now, just to recap, students were asked to explain what the flag of Brazil symbolizes. They were to use details and information from the articles to support their answer. 
Let's begin by taking a look at the different scales. Different states have different scales and they have different rubrics that they use. You're going to need to clearly use the rubric that is necessary for your school, your state, your district. Today I'm going to be showing you three different scales. There's a four point scale, a six point scale, and a ten point scale. These are just examples. You will need to match yours up to not only your point scale, but what's required on your rubric. For this four point scale, it looks at focus, organization, evidence, support, sentence structure and voice, and mechanics, which is capitals, periods, those types of things. The six point scale, organization, focus and support, evidence from text, word choice, sentence structure, and mechanics. And then for the 10 point scale, this is actually one used in Florida, it has purpose and focus, evidence and support is a category altogether, and conventions. This one's a little different than the others in that the first two categories, the focus and support and organization all go together and it's scored from one to four. The evidence and support go together and those are scored one to four. And then the conventions are a separate category and they can have a score of between zero and two. I will provide you with the information of what each paper is scored for the four, six, and ten point scale, and then these can be altered to go with your state rubrics. Let's take a look at the first paper. Now, the way that I recommend scoring a paper is you read it the first time, and as you read, you focus on mechanics and grammar. You go through with your pen and you correct all the mistakes on the student's paper and then you go straight to your rubric and you mark those categories that deal with mechanics and spelling and sentence structure. You score those. Then you go back and read it again and that's when you focus on the content. Let's take a look at what this student has done. These students, this was early in the year and it was before they were taught adequately to use phrases such as according to the first passage or the second source suggest. So you won't see a lot of that because it was early in the year and these students had not yet been instructed on the importance of citing that information. The student indents and starts with, imagine a flag with green, yellow, and blue flying high over Brazil. Have you ever seen Brazil's flag? There is meaning hidden in the flag's features. So we see they're missing an apostrophe here. First, Brazil's flag has a white banner. The words on the banner stand for freedom. Brazil is no longer ruled by a king. The blue sphere has white dots. These stand for Brazil's sky. Again, we're the apostrophe. The white dots are the stars. There are 27 stars because, forgot it's E, Brazil has 27 states. The green on the flag stands for the forests. Brazil has the Amazon that gives earth a lot of its oxygen. The Amazon is filled with plants and animals. Finally, the yellow on the flag stands for the gold and diamond mining. Brazil is a leading producer of gold in the world. Then the conclusion, as you can see, Brazil has a great flag. It holds meaning. Let the flag of Brazil fly high. This student really didn't have a lot of structural or mechanical errors, so they're going to score high in those categories. On the 10 point scale for conventions, I gave them the two, which was the highest score because they had very few errors, mechanical errors. On the six point scale, if you're scoring from a one being the lowest, six being the highest, I gave them a five. And on a four point scale, they earned all four points in mechanics because again, they didn't have a lot of mechanical or structural errors. Now that I've put scores in the mechanics and conventions category, I'm going to go back and look for content. This is where a lot of times you're required to reread it. Two times is usually necessary for really giving the kid a fair score. Notice this student has a beginning and a middle and an end, so they're going to score great in that category. When it comes to focus, they are focused. It says that Brazil's flag, it talks about the different parts. Um, Brazil's flag has a white banner and it explains what the banner has on it, that the little, what the little stars stand for. It talks about the green on the flag being the forests. It discusses a little about the Amazon and the oxygen and the yellow on the flag and that is the gold and diamond mining. It didn't go into a lot of depth of the history and what happened with the uh, gold and diamond mining, but it did touch on it. 
It used text evidence. All of this information came from both text. Clearly the student didn't write all of this off of the top of their head. Typically we would need to see which passage the information came from. But for the purpose of today's training, once again, these were my children, students, and they were not given those specific instructions. It was early in the year and they we had not yet gotten to the importance of telling which source the information came from. So for today's instruction, we're going to kind of overlook that just a little bit. This student does give some support, not a tremendous about a, amount of support. They are talking about the different colors. They touched on the white, the blue, the green, and what that gold stood for in the middle. They did do some explaining. The green is for the Amazon or the forests. Um, they talked a little bit of, they had a little bit of elaboration. It wasn't like a list. The yellow is the gold and diamond mining and they said something else about it, but again, not too much elaboration, but they did have some. And then there was a conclusion that focused on the big ideas. Please keep in mind that scoring is subjective. If you don't agree with one of these scores, it's because there is some subjectivity here, especially when you're grading papers that you did the instruction on, or if it were a write bright lesson, the writing coach from the video did the instruction on, you know what direction students were given. So it's different than if it's just a cold prompt that students are asked to write about. You're gonna, some of those things are gonna come into play when you're actually scoring, whether it was a guided writing lesson or just a cold test without instruction. All right, we're gonna start with the 10 point scale. For purpose and focus, out of four points, this student received a three. On a 10 point scale, when you're doing um, on the Florida scale where it's one to four, a three is good, a four is great. So this student had a good amount of information. They were focused, they had a beginning, middle, and end, so they received a three in this category. Evidence, they did have evidence from the text. It was paraphrased, it wasn't copied from the text. There wasn't a lot of voice in the paper or any type of creativity, so there wasn't anything to give it that four, but they did receive a three in this category. Um, when it came to support, they did have details and elaboration. I didn't see a lot of um, varied sentence structure, so once again, it's just a three. It's a good, well-written paper. So this student scored an overall total points of an eight, giving them an 86. On a six point scale, you can see their organization, beginning, middle, and end, they received a four. A four is a good paper on a six point scale. A six is excellent, a five is a great paper, a four is good, a three is just, has the basic parts but does have issues, a two has a lot of problems, and then you have a one. Focus and support is a four, evidence from text a four. So all of them are pretty average. Word choice is a four, sentence structure is a four, and then they had a five for mechanics because they had very few errors, giving them a total score of an 87%. Now, you're gonna see that sometimes the, the scores do not measure out in percentages, and it's because different rubrics heavily um, weight different things. Some may bring conventions into scale a whole lot higher than other rubrics. So it's not gonna always be the same percentage score. And then this one was also an 87 on a one to four scale. Again, just like the one to four scale on the 10 point scale, a three is considered good. So they had all threes and a four for mechanics, giving them an 87. And these points you can see convert. If you look at the bottom, the total points convert to percentages. And so you kind of, as the scorer, get to decide what the percentage is gonna be based on what you've read. So again, very subjective. Now it's your turn to get your hands dirty and start practicing some scoring. You have the papers there in front of you if you've gone to writebrightstation.com and printed out the printables that go along. The first one you're gonna take a look at starts with grab your swords, and swords is spelled incorrectly. What I'd like for you to do is go through one time and mark this paper up. Look at the sentence structure, look at the mechanical conventions, and mark on it. Go to your score sheet. You can choose if you're going to be using the 4, the 6, or the 10 point. Choose one. You don't have to do them all. Pick the one that is used in your state or cl most closely matches the rubric used in your state. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to 
first mark the conventions category. Then go back through and look at the paper again, and you can go back and score purpose, focus, organization, evidence, support, those types of things. Pause the video, and when we come back, we'll take a look at how well you scored. Let's take a look at how well you did. On a 10-point scale, I scored this paper a 70%, 6-point, a 74, and a 4-point, a 74. Again, there's going to be a difference because of what each rubric is looking at. You were asked to start with the conventions. For a 10-point scale, it gave, I gave it a 1. On a 6-point scale, a 2. And on a four-point scale of two, this one had a lot of errors. There were errors in spelling. There were errors in sentence structure. There were words that they could have pulled from the passages to get the correct spelling of. And there's also some sight words and lower-level words that should have been spelled correctly. The mechanics and conventions did affect this child's overall score. Then when looking more at composition, this student was focused on the topic. They needed more information and details um, for their writing. They did elaborate some, but at a lower level. So on a 10-point scale, you can see I gave them a 3 for purpose and focus and organization because it did have a beginning and middle and end, and it was focused on the topic. It was talking about the flag, and which is what the prompt asked for and what the flag symbolized. So that one I gave it a 3. And then for the evidence, I gave it a 2. There wasn't a ton of details or support given. There could have been more. So they had an overall point of a 6. And so I went with a 70 because I didn't feel it was a high 6. I felt it was more a middle to low 6. This is where you get to kind of decide, okay, what kind of 6 is it? If it's on the low end, your percentage is going to be on the low end. If it's on the high end, your percentage is going to go to the high end. On the six-point scale, mostly threes, which is a three means not great, but it's good. And then with that two for mechanics, they ended up with a 17, which the 17 can be anywhere between a 70 and a 79, and I went with a 74. And then threes and twos mainly for the four-point scale, giving it a final point of 14, and so a 74%. You can see that a 14 is a low three if you look down at the bottom. So this paper would have been scored a low three on a four-point scale. The six-point paper would have been scored a middle three. In your materials, please go to the next um, student essay. This one starts with pack your soccer gear as we head to Brazil. I'd like you to first go through and find your grammar and mechanical mistakes, give that a score, and then look at composition and give that a score. Press pause now. Let's see how you did. Notice that these are about an 80%. Again, there's subjectivity in the grading, so it doesn't have to be exact, but you need to be close. On the 10-point scale, there's um, a 3, a 3, a 1 for conventions, so a total point of a 7. On the 6-point scale, this one ended up with mainly 3s, uh, two fours because it was focused and had evidence, so ended it up with a 20, which is a score of a 4 overall. And then on the 4-point scale, that one ended up with 3s and 2s, which was a 16, giving it a 3 overall. This paper was focused. It was organized. It did have details and elaboration that existed. It had problems with periods and mechanical problems. There were some run-on sentences, basic errors in sentence structure. Overall, this student followed the instructions and they did answer what the prompt was asking them to do. So they ended up with an 80%. All right, essay number four. Let's go to the one that starts with the spotlight today is on Brazil. Brazil is a wonderful place. Go through it and score for conventions and then score for composition. Press pause now. Let's take a look at how you did. When you went through and looked at the conventions or the mechanics, you could see that there were a lot of problems here. So for the 10-point scale, I gave it a 0. For the 6-point scale, a 2, which is a low level out of 6 points. And on the 4-point scale, it scored a 1, which was the lowest it could get in that category. It had a lot of first-grade sight words, second-grade sight words that should have been spelled correctly. 
capital letters at the beginnings of sentences, remembering to indent, just a lot of basic errors. When it came to composition, it had a very weak introduction. It had information that wasn't correct. It said in the bottom of the middle paragraph, they are working hard to create a government. This is great. And that's not what the passage said, that they're currently working to create a government. So it had incorrect information um, as it was trying to cite text evidence. Their conclusion, the next time you read about Brazil, think about this story. If you like the story, punch the like button in the face like a boss. Okay, so while maybe they were getting some voice in there, um, it wasn't related to the topic. The prompt was asking them to write about the symbolism found in Brazil's flag, and the conclusion said nothing about that. So that was not focused at all. So it did have a lot of different problems within it. It tried to pull a little bit from the passage, but it lacked elaboration. It lacked detail. So as you can see, purpose and focus on a 10-point scale it was out of the four point range, a two in both that category and the evidence and support. On a six point scale, it was basically a two, which is just a lower level paper that needs a lot of improvement. And then on the four point scale, ones and twos. So it came out, as you can see, these scores look different. A 58 on a 10 point scale, a 67 on a six point scale, and a 60 on a four point scale. Because each of these things, um, put more of an emphasis on a certain category. So it just depends on your rubric and what your state's rubric is looking for. Essay number five starts with let's blast off into the world of Brazil. Press pause and score this essay. Let's take a look at how you did. Notice it's very high scores, 98, 99, 100. For a 10 point scale, perfect scores, four, four, and a two. We had on a six point scale, there were fives given for word choice and sentence structure. There could have been more complex sentence structure. There could have been um, maybe some more creative word choice. So those were fives, which is still excellent. And then fours for the four point scale. So the overall on the four point scale was a total of four. The six point scale, it was a six and the tens point scale was scored a 10. When it came to conventions and mechanics, there were very few problems with this student's paper. Um, this is actually a boy's paper. This was early in the year. Typically later in the year I would expect a better introduction. So the beginning and the conclusion could have been a little bit longer and had a stronger element of creativity in both the beginning and the end. But this was early in the year. It was focused. It was definitely on topic. It had great organization. There was tons of support and elaboration of ideas, evidence from the text. Things were paraphrased appropriately. Excellent word choice. He wrote, the Amazon has a diverse habitat and it's teeming with wildlife. With this being a shorter writing assignment, early in the year, this is a higher score. Later on in the year, you would expect those transitional phrases that had not been taught yet at this time where he's letting the reader know which passage the information came from. I would also maybe expect um, a little more voice put in this paper in order to give it 100%. Overall, this student did an excellent job. Essay number six starts with hold on to your hats. Take out that essay and use your scoring rubric Please press pause and score the paper now. All right, paper number six. It had a lot of basic spelling errors. It had a sentence that was copied straight from the passage. It said it focused on a system run by the people. That was not paraphrased. It started off strong by talking about the banner and the Federal Republic, but then it grew listy. The the green stands for this, the blue stands for this, the yellow stands for this. It grew very listy without elaboration. The conclusion lacked transition and was very weak. Let's take a look at the scoring. On a 10 point scale, I gave it a three, two, and one with an overall point of six, giving it a 68%. The evidence and support was definitely um, hurt this student's score. They started off giving some support, but then it just became like a list. So that's why that is a two. The conventions were a problem, so it's a one. 
on a six point scale, it was a 15, so that would be a three. It was an overall three out of six points, giving it a 73. Again, the percentage has to do with the rubric. It scored low in focus and support and also mechanics. And then on the four point scale, it was a 71. It scored a two having not a well-developed beginning and end with organization. It had some text, but not a ton. It was very listy, not enough elaboration of ideas, so it scored a one in that category. Moving on to paper number seven, it starts with come one, come all, as we seek to examine Brazil. Take out this pr paper and press pause and please score it now. Let's see how you, well you scored. Once again, this is subjective. You are not expected to have the exact same thing as these rubrics. It just needs to be close. This student did a great job. There were few problems with mechanics. There was, I think, a few capital letters and a, a couple um, maybe subject verb agreement type issues. Otherwise, the student did an excellent job. So the mechanics were on the 10 point scale, the highest, which is a two. On a six point scale, it would be a five. But it's not a perfect six because there are some issues, just a few. And then on the four point scale, a three. When it comes to the composition overall, this was very focused. It was exactly what the prompt had asked them to write about. It had the organization of a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning and end could have been more well-developed. They weren't um, complex or creative in any way. So on the 10-point scale, that was given a score of a three. On the six-point scale, you see organization, focus, and support. We have a four and a five. And then on the four-point scale, focus was a four, organization was a three. When it came to evidence, there was a lot of text evidence used and cited, very well written, nice sentence structure. So you can see the scores that went along with those things. 10 point scale was a four, six point scale fives, and then on the four point scale fours. So the overall scores were pretty close on this one within the 94, 95th percentile. If you've marked it anywhere between 92 and 96, then you're in the right range. The final passage, passage number eight, the spotlight today is on Brazil's flag. There is great meaning to the flag. Go ahead and take out that paper and score it. Press pause now. Let's take a look at how you did. All right, this paper um, is focused and does have some evidence. It has a lot of problems with conventions. As you can see, there's you know, just words that are incorrect, using then instead of then, problems with some capital letters, those types of things. There's a few issues in sentence structure. On the 10 point scale, a one was given for conventions. On the six point scale, you see threes for sentence structure and mechanics. And then on the four point scales, you have a three and a two for what they're looking for. When it comes to purpose and focus, this was focused and it did have good text evidence. So, but it wasn't over the top, it wasn't high enough to be a level four. So on the 10 point scale, both of those categories are given threes. On the six point scale, out of six points, the focus and evidence were fours. And then on the four point scale, they are threes. So the student did an adequate job, but not above and beyond. This student scores, I have an 82, 82 and an 84. So as long as you're between 80 and 80, 586, you're in the right range for scoring this essay. Thank you for joining me for this scoring training. I hope that you will visit writebrightstation.com. You can email support at writebrightstation.com requesting a 24-hour access pass to visit and take a tour of the site. Have a great day.